250 DGS. We are here with George Rosenthal, one of the owners from ThrottleNet. Find him at throttlenet.com slash DGS. Uh, talk about AI because it's fun. And Wheels on the Break just put in Dave Glover as a superhero. Dave no Glover, picture. radio host. No picture. Yep, as a superhero. And it found a picture. Made it AI, turned me into like a RoboCop looking thing. Yeah, kind of like Magneto almost, yeah. Cool and spooky. Yeah, you got like blue light coming out of the back of your head. Oh, I saw it. Yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah. It got the goatee too. <laughs> it did, it did. It got the goatee and everything. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty cool. Yeah. What else do we want to talk about? Well, I tell you what, the, in the medical world, uh, there's some really fascinating things. So Johns Hopkins uh, has now proved the ability to predict a cardiac arrest. Up to five years in advance. Five years? Yes. So they will look at, the AI can look into your, your current medical history, all types of exams, whatever it may be, predict the risk of a heart attack, and then put a defibrillator in, implant a defibrillator, so that you're basically preparing for a heart attack. And it's a, that's just fascinating to me. Uh, the other one was uh, the ability to uh, predict premature birth. And so it uses electrical activity in the uterus and can actually influence the, how the pregnancy is managed to, pre, to prevent a premature birth. Uh, it, Harvard actually came up with using AI, a way to diagnose lung cancer and pancreatic cancer uh, years in advance. It's just fascinating. So it, the, the positives of, of AI are just unbelievable, along with turning you into a superhero. What about the, uh, this was just last week, I think, like the 400 uh, and some odd scientists, experts who said, throw it in the river. Like, <laughs> it's going to lead to extinction. Do guys like I, you go, ah, eh, whatever, nah, sissies? I don't, I don't think, I think what's, thankfully, there are guys like Elon Musk, the CEO of OpenAI, who at least went and up into public and said, if we handle this properly, then human society will benefit in a massive, massive way. If we are not responsible, then yes, it's we're all doomed. But it's being handled responsibly, and here's what I mean. Google uh, announced that they are going to start watermarking and putting metadata into their AI output. So if you see a picture of, like, the Pope dressed like a rapper, which is out there, there'll be a little watermark from Google that says, this is not a real picture, this is AI. Mm. Um, so like, for example, MIT... Did just released a 12 minute movie called The Frost. If you get a chance to go look at it, it's 12 minutes. Just type in The Frost, MIT. It's very creepy. Very creepy. Like the voices, the, the lips don't move with the voice perfectly, but everything you're watching was created from text. So it's a whole story of this group out in the Arctic and they're, they're trying to survive. And it's all how the AI interpreted just a few sentences and then created a 12 minute movie based on those 124 frames per second. Okay. This may be unanswerable, but even in my brain, I am fascinated with like last night I had a, a dream and it was so vivid and I'm fascinated by how this electric meetup here took from things necessarily yeah. took from things in my brain and put this movie together. Yeah. I get that because my brain's creative. Right. The AI only knows what humans know. Correct. How does it do the creative part? So How it, does it choose I'm going to use this guy's hair and this guy's pipe? How does it do so that? So it's gathering information. Now, it depends on which one you use. GPT only goes to the year 2021 of September. Uh, but AI goes out and scours the Internet of what a human looks like, should look like in this situation. It's cold, so it relates that temperature to a heavy jacket. So it goes out and finds images of what a heavy jacket or a uh, someone who's like maybe in the Arctic would wear and puts all that together on its own in seconds. And what fascinates me, though, is how it goes out. Like when he made the RoboCop Dave Glover. Yeah. It, it obviously there are thousands of pictures of me out there. How it goes, mm, not that one. Yeah, this it, one. It's fascinating, and and what's weird is that the even the executive at IBM said they don't know how that works. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. She I don't said like that, that. <laughs> and she said that in front of Congress like at, in, uh, at her testimony in Congress. We don't know how that works. She said we don't mm. exactly understand how that happens. Like that which was means she said that, which means to me, yes, there's like. Not literally, obviously, but it means to me there's like a little person in there that we don't understand. <laughs> I know. Living well, in a series of tubes. <laughs> imagine it being more complex than than what we can than what a person can understand, and that is we're not there yet. But when it gets to quantum computing, we will be there, and that's something where you know that we have to be responsible now. I I know a lot of people don't want to regulate. They hate regulations. This. I don't. I don't. Trust we need to be regulating humans. it. 
Yeah, I know. It, and if we're not regulating it and putting rules behind it now, uh, making sure that it's properly tested before it's released to the yeah. public, um, it could get dangerous. But right now, it's not. Thankfully, we're being responsible a little bit. Go ahead, Rach. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I think they're putting Kamala Harris in charge of uh, AI. Like, she's been named the AI star. Well, she's to... killed it on the border, so. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I don't know what kind of job she's going to do with it, but at least they're someone in government is going to be looking after this because it just seems like for so long, it seems like we've just waited until the last possible minute and the exam is tomorrow and we're trying to cram like, oh, someone should do something about this real quick. It does feel like that. But the thing is, you'd think that they would take somebody who's really qualified. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I don't know what she knows about AI. understands how AI works and goes, hey, uh, can you get in here and take care of this? Because you know more about the potential, the possibilities, Mm -hmm. how it operates, how it functions. I don't. I, I, I hope she assigns somebody that is, you know, deep into it, like the CEO of OpenAI. That would be great. Um, who's from St. Louis, by the way? Um, that would be great to have that person say, "Okay, great. I will help out the government, set up a set of rules on, and regulations." Um, yeah, he's a St. Louisan, hmm. so I think that would be something that. And he has been very open and upfront, saying we are aware of the dangers, we are aware of the potential and of good things. We're we're being very, we're trying to be responsible. And he went out in front of Congress and and told the truth. I mean, he was he wasn't like trying to be shy about it or hide yeah. something. He, it almost seemed like he was asking for help. He was. Oh, he flat out said, "We need, please help me regulate this thing." Mm. He goes, "I." And that's when one of the senators said, "Man, I've never heard of a, a business industry asking for government regulation because it never happened before." No, mm. no, no industry wants the government to come in and regulate them. But this is totally different. This is humane. This is a, the, the future of humanity. Um, so and it truly is. It, this is the last, like we've mentioned several times, yeah. this is the last big thing that humans okay, will invent. Last question. <clears throat> Having a daughter who's heading into college, trying to decide what to do for a living, for technically minded young people who would like to go into what was formerly known as IT, what should they do? How is it going to be different? How should they train? Well, if you're if you're going to go into IT, cybersecurity is going to be the future because bad guys will use AI to try and get money to break your systems, to hack into your networks. That's, you will, you will have a job for a career for a very long time in the cybersecurity world. Uh, software developers, sort of, like a tier three. Right now, AI can write code, um, but you still have to have a human to implement that code. You still have to have an, a human to test the code and then give feedback what back to AI. What do you not need humans to do anymore on an IT level? Uh, I, you know, you're, when you get into real easy things like level tier one kind of tasks where a human can say, yes, go do this. And then the AI goes out and makes that task happen and comes back and reports to the person. Um, uh, I think really the, a lot of the jobs are going to be in the, some of them are going to be in the creative side of it. Um, but again, like we talked before, the skills and the trades are going to be around a long time. So, uh, but if you're getting into the tech world, cybersecurity. Like it's a good time to be a high tech person yes. or a low tech person. Correct. I, would have, tech, I totally agree. I mean, like the trades. The trades. Put yeah. two pipes together. Electricians, plumbers, contractors, uh, yes, roofers. Uh, yeah, construction. Absolutely. Very cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, if you want to get you. a hold of George, go to throttlenet.com slash DGS.